Samuel Blumenfeld and Alex Newman are the co-authors of Crimes of the Educators. They take us on a wild ride as they document a process that has been going on for over 100 years. Alex speaks to us today from Florida. I've really been looking forward to this. Thanks very much for having me, Steve. I really appreciate the opportunity. Alex, I was very saddened to hear about the death of your co-author, Samuel Blumenfeld, in early June. It's uh, really tragic for all of us, for his friends, his family, his colleagues, and uh, his many admirers across the country. But there is a bright side. At least he accomplished what he felt was his mission here. He got this last book out, which that was a big dream of his. And he did a fabulous job with it, too. How about if we start with proof that student performance is going down? A national wake-up call sounded in 1994 when the College Board recentered the scoring scales of the SAT exam in a clumsy attempt to mask the fact that student performance had been plummeting for generations. How are the kids doing now? We have all kinds of objective data, of even government statistics, showing that the education system in the United States, even though we pay more and more money for it, and we, you know, we're up at about a trillion dollars every year now, it continues to get worse and worse. This isn't a secret. This is quite well known. Now let's move to a clear example of how our children are being miseducated. Tell us why the whole word method of reading is such a problem. Rather than teaching the children how to read, they're teaching the children to memorize words as if our language was Chinese, as if our words were a symbol that's supposed to represent a concept rather than a collection of phonetic letters, each with their own sound associated with it, uh, that form a word and that you can sound out and then uncover what the word means. This is just absolute quackery. Alex, your book really blew me away when you discussed the link between the whole word method and dyslexia. Tell us about the scientific evidence. One of the most interesting developments in modern technology as far as education goes is now the ability to do brain scans. Brain scans on children who learned how to read the correct way with phonics. Uh, and then they did the same brain scans on children who had learned how to read uh, using this whole word method. And what the researchers found, that the children who learned how to read using the whole word method have actual physical impairment in their brain because reading is really, in our language, it's a left brain function. Uh, and the educators, did, with, through the whole word method, they're trying to make the children learn to read using their right brain. And so, you know, this is not compatible with reality. It's not compatible with the way our brain is supposed to operate. Let's take it another step. What's the connection between attention deficit disorder and the whole word method? There's a strong correlation here as well. What you have is these students who are being deliberately dumbed down in the schools, not by the teachers, of course, but by the people who train the teachers, by the education establishment, by the Federal Department of Education. And then suddenly they can't read and they become convinced that they're dumb, they, they don't enjoy school, it just feels pointless and stupid and counterproductive. And so then they begin to act out and you know they don't pay attention in class and they misbehave. Uh, and these are natural reactions that you would expect from somebody who is being deliberately dumbed down. Is there a way to reverse the damage caused by this faulty method of reading? You know, Sam showed it took students and children and even some adults who were dyslexic. He retrained them, and, and it, of course this is much harder than teaching a child how to read uh, to begin with using the proper phonetic method. But uh, Sam was able to undo the damage that the schools had done. You're referring, of course, to your writing partner, Sam Blumenfeld. Moving on to a related subject, a lot of people are upset today about Common Core. What's the hidden danger? The Common Core people put together a Common Core Validation Committee, and they put two subject matter experts on this committee. The English expert, Dr. Sandra Stotsky of the University of Arkansas, she said, I'm not signing off on these standards. They're going to reduce the critical thinking abilities of children. They're terrible. They're non-challenging. They're not internationally benchmarked. The other expert, Dr. James Milgram, uh, he's a mathematician from Stanford University, he also refused to sign off on these standards. He said these standards are as non-challenging as possible. They're not going to be preparing students for real college work. Some of them are based on incorrect mathematics. Alex, who would you say is most responsible for initiating the dumbing down process over a century ago? Without any question whatsoever, it's John Dewey. John Dewey was a socialist, a progressive, a utopian, a humanist, an atheist, all kinds of different things, and he was very uh, proud of these things. It wasn't a secret or anything like that. 
like that, and he wanted to turn America from what he considered to be an individualistic, uh, capitalist, uh, free society into a collectivist utopia. And so he set out to dumb down the population of this country. Your book actually reprints in Appendix B one of John Dewey's essays, in which he advocates the de-emphasis of reading and writing. It's kind of ironic he used a graduate school language style to make his point, instead of writing like a third or fourth grader, like he wanted for us. Dewey's modern-day counterpart would be Bill Gates, who's given so generously to establish Common Core. By the way, Alex, what kind of school did the Gates children attend? A non-Common Core fancy-pantsy private school. And of course, all of the Common Core promoters, uh, at least the ones who understand what's going on here, send their children to wealthy uh, private schools where they abhor and avoid Common Core like the plague because they don't want to dumb down their own children. They expect their own children to be the future rulers and masters and uh, philosopher kings of our society. So it's no surprise. You know, the Obamas, of course, don't send their children to uh, Common Core schools. You point out there's a way to escape the educational insanity engulfing our nation. Could you give us any solid proof on how well homeschoolers are doing? Parents who have no formal training in how to educate children are raising up children who leave their government school peers in the dust, and they're always winning the national spelling bees, and they're many, many points ahead on the SAT and all these things that the government schools are training the kids for. I agree. Homeschooling is definitely the light at the end of the tunnel. Alex, it's been great visiting with you today. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much, Steve. I appreciate your time, and uh, you keep up the great work as well. Alex Newman is co-author of Crimes of the Educators, How Utopians Are Using Government Schools to Destroy America's Children. It's published by WND Books and is available online and at major booksellers. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com.